Hello guys, we are now on lesson 9-6 and this one is called Divide Whole Numbers and Unit Fractions. So just to refresh your memory, unit fractions, remember, are any fraction where one is my numerator and I can have any other number as my denominator. So one fourth, one sixth, one twelfth, one hundredth, as long as you have that one as your numerator. Uh, for this problem, we are going to be dividing up a garden. So the solve and share, I'm gonna do the solve and share and the look back together because the look back just going ahead is asking me to write an equation that models this problem. And I like to do them simultaneously. So I wanna do the equation and the drawing at the same time so you can see why the drawing works and why the equation works. Okay, so the solve and share problem is the Brown family is planting one third of their garden with flowers. So they took the entire garden plot and they cut it into three pieces. So the first third is going to be flowers. The second third is going to be berries. That's the middle section. And one third is going to be vegetables. Now the vegetable section, they're cutting into four different parts because they wanna grow four different vegetables. So in the vegetable section, they have carrots, onions, peppers, and tomatoes. So they're gonna cut this. Carrots, onions, peppers, and tomatoes. And their question now is, what fraction of the garden is planted with carrots? So we're only looking at this section and we wanna find out what that little rectangular or square piece is of the garden. Now, the wording of the problem is very important. So I'm gonna read that question again. It says, what fraction of the garden? It's not what fraction of the vegetable section. So a lot of times we'll look at it and we'll say, oh, it's cut into four pieces, so it must be a fourth. But a fourth is not going to be correct in this case because we have all of this that has to be accounted for too, because it's the section in comparison to the entire garden. So we have this section that we need to find out, right? And this is where I'm going to also do my number model. So I know first that I cut the garden into three pieces. So we're going to be looking at this one third. So I'm gonna start with one third. And then what did we do to that one third? We divided that one third into how many pieces? We divided it into four. So my fraction one third, again, is I'm looking at one of the three parts that I cut it into, and I'm going to divide that into four pieces. So my problem right now looks like that. Okay, so again, this goes back to the look back also, because the look back is asking me for a number model and my actual garden picture that I'm going to use. So again, I know that it can't be a fourth, so it has to be a different fraction, and it actually has to be a smaller fraction than a fourth, because a fourth would mean if I cut the entire garden into four pieces. So for this one, I have one piece out of these four, right? But what I have to think about is, if I cut this third into four pieces, that means I need to cut this into four pieces, and I need to cut this into four pieces, so that the entire garden looks the same. Because remember we use that term fair shares. Now everything in the garden is fair shares. So even though flowers are in this whole part, there's a section of flowers, a section of flowers, a section of flowers, a section of flowers. So there's four parts to that flower section. There's four parts to the berry section. There's four parts to the vegetable section. So now when I'm looking just at that carrot part of the plot of the garden, it's one section, right, out of how many total sections did I cut the entire garden into. So I have four, eight, 12 total little pieces. So the carrot section is one twelfth of the entire garden. Now, why does that work in a number model? Or how does it work in a number model? Remember when I'm doing my division, I'm starting with my one third. I cut it, I divide it, 
into four parts. And we're going to take that four, remember whole number four, I'm going to put a one underneath. When I go to do my division, remember I'm going to flip and what we say is we're going to be multiplying the reciprocal. Reciprocal is a math term that simply means the opposite of what we already had when I'm talking about the fraction. So if I have a fraction four over one, the reciprocal of that is one over four. It's just the fraction flipped over. So once I take that fraction four over one and I flip it, or get its reciprocal, one over four, that's when I can then change my sign from division to multiplication. So I'm going to now multiply, and when I multiply across, one times one is one, three times four is 12, and that's the same answer that I got when I used the drawing. Okay, so one third, remember, divided by four is going to give me one twelfth. You notice how when I did the division, I started with that fraction one third, and when I divided it by the whole number, what happened to my fraction? Think about it in terms of, did my fraction get larger or did my fraction get smaller? And remember um, something that I noticed on some previous pages, when I have a fraction that has a denominator that's a smaller number, like three, and I compare it to a number, a fraction, where the denominator is a larger number, like 12, if they have the same numerator, the one with the larger denominator is the smaller fraction. It's the smaller number. So it works opposite than whole numbers work. Because remember when we first learned about fractions, we say, would you like one half of a candy bar or would you like one hundredth of a candy bar? Well, if you really want candy, and you really like candy bars, you would rather have this one because the candy bar is cut into two pieces and you're getting one of the two. Over here, the candy bar is cut into a hundred pieces and you're only getting one tiny little square of that. So bigger the denominator, smaller the piece. So in this case, when I went from my one third and I divided by four, I ended up with a smaller number when I did the division. Okay, that was the solvent chair and the look back for lesson nine six. In the next video, I'm going to go over the convince me and the guided practice before you work on the independent practice on your own.